good morning everyone happy new year to you 2014 sounds a little funny doesn't it <laughs> have to get used to writing that uh, but it's good to see you we're facing some really cold and bad weather but sun's shining now and we're in a good place to be if you are visiting with us today we are glad to have you. There are some little cards in the pew in front of you. You can fill it out if you don't mind and place it in the offering plate so we can have a record of your visit. The bulletin was run before we found this out. Brother Rocky is still not feeling very well. This stuff is just hanging on. Y'all pray for him, please, and pray for Sharon. I know you do daily, but especially as he tries to get over this stuff that everybody has had or, or <clears throat> has gotten and uh, Bill's going to preach for him today and we appreciate Bill being so willing and, and so so able to do so. We had 114 in Sunday school this morning which is very good and we appreciate that. There are a few announcements over here. This is kind of a slow time for us right now and uh, not a whole lot of things going on but the good news is look at our Lottie Moon Christmas offering we only lack a hundred and eighteen dollars to reach our goal isn't that wonderful appreciate appreciate all the good stewardship in that Jason has something he wants to say good morning happy 2014 <laughs> um, some of us got to ring it in here at UBC and the Family Life Center, and we had 50 people, 51 people actually, for the New Year's festivities in the Family Life Center. I want to thank everyone who brought a snack or a dish or just came out to help us celebrate that. That was a whole lot of fun. Um, we had 21 for the lock-in. The lock-in was a great success. We were all worn out, and all of those energy drinks we had were exactly what we needed. Uh, when 2 a.m. rolled around, we had the first round of them, and it was like a little um, sparkler was lit, and then it just whoosh, and then it went down to about 4 a.m., and then we had the next round. Um, Caleb Brady was in rare form. Uh, I will have to say, he looked like a spider monkey that was set on fire running around the gym <laughs> at one point. I, I, he even said he climbed the wall, and I believe him. I really do believe him. It, all the youth looks completely worn out, as you can tell, especially Lena Bina with her highlighter. Yeah. Um, but we want to thank everyone for the support and the time and the effort they gave, especially our volunteers, Lloyd, Miss um, Beth, and Dennis Franklin, uh, and uh, my girlfriend Shelby. Thank you so much for everybody who helped. That was a really great, good thing. Um, we got a. We had a lot to do that night. Uh, I will say the best thing we did all night was team hide and seek. We played six rounds for about an hour and a half. <laughs> and if your Sunday school room was a little disheveled or moved around, I'm very sorry, but there was a lot of hiding going on in those Sunday school rooms for the most part. Uh, I don't think this, the ones on the right were really used a whole lot in the Family Life Center. When you go up and you turn left, the ones on the right side of the hall, because we had special effects going on in the windows and stuff. But uh, if your Sunday school room was disheveled or slightly moved around, uh, I do apologize, but uh, we can get on that, fixing that. Um, I will say there are some things we're looking forward to as a youth group for 2014. Um, in February, we're talking about going to see the Son of God movie, which is a compilation. If you ha did not get a chance to see it, it was the Discovery series on the Bible, and it's the New Testament, everything pertaining to Jesus' life from his birth to the crucifixion and his resurrection. They have re-edited and recut that into a three-hour movie, and that will be showing in February, and uh, we are looking forward to that. We might even be selling some advanced tickets to the youth group. So, um, Remember to look about that, read up on it, and if you have any questions or concerns about that movie and uh, the advertising of it, come talk to me and we'll see. If it's a good thing, we'll go to it. If not, we'll leave it alone. Well, thanks.
Hey, boys and girls, please join me down here. Okay, boys on the floor, girls up here. Hey, Daniel. Yeah. <clears throat> so good to see y'all. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been left behind? Oh, your parents forgot you? Has that ever happened? Has it happened? Who said yes? D Daniel, did you get left behind one time? New Year's Eve? Okay. Oh my, well maybe you shouldn't be telling telling him he got left, okay? <laughs> no, I mean if did you did your mom and dad ever forget you? Oh well that's good. I hate to say, but we left Jason one time. He got left behind. My little boy got you remember that, Jason? <laughs> He'll never forgive us. <laughs> but we left him at church here. Coach thought he was with me, and I thought he was with Coach. And we got home, and we were home for a little while, and we, well, where'd Jason go? <laughs> and then we realized that at that time, there was a stump out in the yard out there, churchyard. And we came back, and he was just sitting on the stump. <laughs> and he said, oh, I, I knew somebody would come back for me. Hey, I don't think he was there very long, and we just lived down the street. But do you know there's a story in the Bible, and it's true, because everything in the Bible is true, about Jesus being a little boy and getting left behind. Now, we've got the story of Jesus' birth, and then we don't know anything till he was 12 years old. And it says, every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they did not know it. They were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, because there was a lot of people from their town, and they were probably mostly walking, they traveled on for a whole day and didn't realize he was with them. Then they began looking for him. Can you imagine how upset they might have been? They began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they didn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. So they traveled for a day. They had to travel back. That must have taken a day. And then they didn't find him for three days. After three days, they found him in the temple court, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. And he said, Why were you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they really didn't understand what he was saying to them. He went back to Nazareth, their hometown, with them, and he was obedient to them. He was obedient to his parents, but his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. I want y'all to be really aware of being obedient to your parents this year. It's a new year. We kind of wipe the slate clean and uh, don't get separated from them like Jesus did. Jesus knew what he was doing. He was uh, learning and listening to the teachers. But uh, mind your folks. Obey your folks because that's what God wants us to do. And stay close to him and stay close to Jesus. Let's have a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all these boys and girls and we just thank you for this new year that you have given us. And we want to be close to you, dear Lord, and we want to be shining lights for you wherever we are. Just keep us safe and bring us back every week to your house. Amen.
Thank you. what I seek, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. Please get your hymnals and turn to hymn 68, Holy, 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 all four verses. Let's stand together as we sing.
Let us pray. Father, we thank You for this time that we can come together and study Thy Word and to sing these songs of praise unto Thee and to help fellowship with these people we love. We thank You, Lord, for the blessings that Thou have bestowed upon us as a church and as a church family this past year. And Lord, we just pray that You would continue to bless us as we go into this new year of 2014. Lord, that You will bless each family, keep us well, let it be Thy will. And bless us spiritually as we continue to grow in thy grace and knowledge. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. We have many, Lord, that are sick, especially Brother Rocky and Sharon, that we continue to pray for, Lord, that they might be healed and back in doing the things that they are supposed to be doing. We pray, Lord, for all the others that have sicknesses, that have any problems, Lord. There are many and you know their needs, whether it be financial or marital or spiritual or, or physical. And we just pray, Lord, that you attend to each one in their own way. We pray, Lord, for Bill as he comes and brings the message this morning. Place upon his heart the words that I would have him to say. Lord, we pray for our men and women that are in armed services in harm's way. And we just pray, Lord, that they will soon be back home to their families and save them. We know that there are many that are coming back crippled. And we know that they have a new, new way of life that they have to be accustomed to. Pray now, Lord, where we fail thee and, and help us and forgive us for us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let's continue singing by turning to 315 his name is wonderful. Then we'll turn over one page to 317. There's something about that name. We'll sing that through two times.
singing. That was beautiful. At this time, please stand for the doxology. Remain standing for the offertory prayer to follow. <clears throat> Pray. Oh, gracious Father, you bless us so much. And Father, we thank you for the blessings of this past year spiritually and financially. Father, we thank you for this church and the giving spirit that it has. Bless those, Father, that have given this past year way far above what you would require of them. They've given from the heart. Thank you for that. Thank you that we've almost met our... Our goal is missions, Father. I, we thank you for that. This is a giving church. But help us in this next year to give. And give liberally. Out of love. Father, we ask it now that you would bless this offering. Father, use it. Father, use it to reach souls for your kingdom. We ask that you bless the giver. Thank you for the people who are so faithful. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
that mystery. We do want our hearts and our eyes to be open. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. Is that the prayer of your heart today? Do you want to walk with Jesus? Do you want to walk with Him? Now, let me say something about last week when we sang that song, The Chains Are Gone. The reason I said nothing about that, because if I'd have started about there, I wouldn't have gotten anywhere. I don't know how that affected you. Uh, today we get the rest of the message, as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story. Uh, today we're going to be in Jeremiah chapter 7, two places, chapter 7, verses 23 and 24, and then Jeremiah 17, 5, 6, and 7. Uh, <clears throat> and the songs you sang, Walk With Me, today we're going to concentrate on that on the, in these verses, the children of Israel disobeyed the voice of, of the Lord and did not walk in His precepts. So consequently, they walked according to their own counsels. They walked not with, not with the Lord, they walked away from the Lord. So, that's our message today. So, would you stand with me for the reading of God's Word? Verses 23 and 24 
of chapter 7. But, the, <clears throat> but this thing com commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and the imaginations or the stubbornness of their evil heart and went backwards and not forward. And then in chapter 17, verse 5, 6, and 7. Now to walk... To walk in our own counsels is to walk according to our fallen nature or the flesh. So here's what the Lord says about that. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Now what would be the consequences of that? Verse 6, For he shall be like a heath in the desert, and shall not see when, when good cometh but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited. Now contrast that with one who walks with the Lord. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh. For her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful, or shall not be anxious, or afraid. In the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. You may be seated. Now last week we talked about, we talked about the children of Israel and the grounds upon which they had been delivered. And we said that God had delivered them upon the grounds of the covenant. And uh, that's the... And you and I, if you are a child of God today, you are in blood covenant with the Lord. And He delivered them on the grounds of the covenant and brought them out. And once He had brought them out, they were in the wilderness. But that is not where God wants them to be. And I said last week that everyone here and everyone in the world is in one of three places. You're either in Egypt, that is the world, apart from God... In darkness, spiritually speaking, or you're in the wilderness. You have applied the blood of Christ, but you may be in the wilderness. Or you are in Canaan, that place of rest. That's where God wants us to be. That's where He wants us to be. And, and we depend upon the promises of God. And to walk with God, we must, we must believe God's precious promises. If we do not believe His promises, then who do we trust? We're trusting in ourselves. We're trusting in the flesh, and we're walking according to our counsels. And, and we, we read, this is just, just to recap a little bit so we'll lay the groundwork. Last week we read in Exodus chapter 6 of, of the grounds on which God brought the children of Israel out. He said, I will bring you out. That's, that's one of the I wills in chapter 6 there. I will bring you out from the, under the burdens of Egypt. And he said, I will rid you out of their bondage. Number two. Number three, he said, I will redeem you with a stretched forth arm. And, uh, and, and that's what he did for us. He redeemed us with, through his power. And because the resurrection, it, it's, uh, it took power to resurrect the, the Lord with a stretched out arm. I will take you unto me for a people. He chose us and he took us to himself. I, I will be to you a God, and I will bring you into the land. That's their promised possession. He said, and I will give it you for a heritage. That's your inheritance. We have an inheritance too. And we can enjoy that inheritance down here. That is our Canaan of rest. That's where he wants us to be. He wants us to enjoy. Now, who made these promises? The last clause in that verse there says, I am the Lord. The I am brought us out. And, uh, and he brought us out on the blood covenant, that promise that he had made to Abraham. Now, what we want to do today is, first of all, I want us to look at and contrast two sides of the coin, to walk with or to, walk, uh, to not walk with, to go forward or to go backward. 
That's the question. Now, now the first thing to walk with God, the first thing, we must be reconciled to Him. There first must be reconciliation. He's, he brought the children of Israel out because they placed the blood over the door. They placed the blood. And by the blood of the Lamb, He brought them out. Now they're in the wilderness. Now, let me say this. That the natural man, that is our old Adamic nature, had no will or power to walk with God. We have no will. We have no power. That is, the, the man apart from God, the lost man, he has none. First Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man does not accept. Now that is our old nature. That old man does not accept the things of God because they're spiritually discerned. They're foolishness to him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned or judged. See, a man that is lost and apart from God has no judgment of the things of God. He cannot judge. He, cannot, he sees foolishness in what we do. He sees foolishness. Now, but remember this. In verse 16 of that, we that are redeemed, it says, but we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Now, first of all, to walk with God, we must have a corresponding nature. Okay, we must have a corresponding nature to walk with God. No sinner can walk with God uh, for he has nothing in common with him. We don't have anything. A lost man has nothing in common with God. He's apart from him. God is light. We're darkness. That's the lost man. Light and darkness. Now, here's the thing. Can you, can you put a light in a dark room and it still be dark? No. The, the darkness has to flee when light comes in. Now, here, here's the thing. All right. The mind. All right. The sinner's mind is at enmity against God. The sinner's mind is at enmity against God. Romans 8, 6 says that to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now, verse 7 says, because the carnal mind is enmity is against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither need can be. So then they that, are, that obey are they that are in the flesh, and... Sometimes you, you have to understand when, when the Bible in most places talks about the flesh, it's talking about that old man nature. It's not talking about this. Most places it's not. That old, that old Adamic nature cannot please God. In other words, if we, if we obey that. Now, walking with God in all His ways, in, in verse 7 here, to walk in all the ways of chapter, verse, chapter 7, verse 23, he says, Walk in all my ways. Now, walking with God in all His ways, that means that we cease from taking our own way and we must walk in God's ways. Now, now <clears throat> to walk with God requires a surrender of will. You remember what I said? We had no will or had any power to have any will to serve God. We had none. It had to come from Him. Okay? Now, if we would walk with the Lord, that means we must have a willingness on our part to cease our way and to follow His way. Now, we're going to look at one side of the coin, the positive side of the coin. First of all, we'll ask this question. What would be the result of walking with God? What would be the result? You know, the first thing that you might think of, and what I would think of, is there would be a growth in grace. Right? You'd grow in grace. If we walk with God, now get this statement, we cannot be what we were morally or spiritually at the beginning. You cannot be. There has to be growth. You cannot be what you were morally or spiritually at the beginning. Walking implies progress. Okay? Walking implies progress. Now, number, uh, <clears throat> number two. What would we have if we walked with God? We would have a deeper awareness of our own sin. 
a deeper awareness of our own sin. And we would be more humble in the estimation of ourselves. Humbleness. Awareness of our sin. And number three. We would feel more and more need of absolute dependence upon Him. Absolute dependence. That's what we would have. Number four. We would have a larger capacity to enjoy His presence, to enjoy the Lord. A larger capacity uh, to, to enjoy Him. And, and there would be growth uh, in the knowledge of the Lord. That implies that we would know Him better. We would know more about Him. And therefore, we would be morally and spiritually far, far from what we were at the beginning. Now we flip the coin over. Let's flip the coin over to the negative side. Now what would be the result of not walking in the ways of God? Notice in chapter 7 and verse 24. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imaginations of their evil heart. They went backwards instead of forward. In other words, what we just said before was that there's forward progress. This is to go backward, not to go forward. The children of Israel wandered around in the desert and went backwards. Why? Because they failed to walk in the ways of the Lord. Now, number one, a refusal to hear. Notice what it said here <coughs> in uh, verse 24. They incl they nor inclined their ear. They refused to hear. I believe that we live in an age where we're dull of hearing. I believe that, 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 that people come and sit on a church pew and they hear a message, but they do not hear where they need to hear. They, you do not hear with the Spirit. You, you, look, you must become prepared to hear with the mind to hear with the ear and with the mind. Because listen, when I talk about the will, do you realize that if you drew a chart and it's like a circle, right? And the outer circle is the flesh. The inner circle is the soul. And right in the middle is the spirit. Do you know what, what where the direct entrance in to the spirit is? It's through the ear, through the memory, and then to the will gate. Everything that enters the, the Spirit and comes forth from the Spirit comes through the will gate. Surrender of the will. So to hear, and the stubbornness of their heart, they did not hear. They, uh, so what did they have? They had a moral and spiritual stagnation. They had a moral and spiritual stagnation. They, <coughs> number three, they t depended on ceremony, on form, without heart. Turn back just a little in your, in your Bible, in the same chapter, chapter 7, and we'll see the condition that the children had. This was the, in the time present when Jeremiah was prophesying. The same problem that the children of Israel had when they first came out, had come all the way down, and now we're all the way down here to 40 years before they, within 40 years of when they go into captivity, and the same condition existed. Exactly the same existed. Now, in verse 9 of this chapter, it says, Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense into Baal, and walk? There's their word again, after other gods whom you know not. Let me, last week in our bulletin, remember what it says? It said there, that anything, it's not the sins that you, we commit, that is what we, the sins that we do, uh, he used like do, running a stop sign, those kind of things, but it's, it's outward, but it proceeds from where? It proceeds from within. Anything that separates your heart from the heart of God and the will of God is sin. Anything that you, it separates you from that. Now, and then verse 10, he says, And you come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered from all these abominations. 
they trivialized our, their sin. Do you see what I'm saying? They walk not. Remember what it said? You would have a more of awareness of sin. To walk with God, you would be more aware of your sin. Now, uh, that would be that they had a flippid attitude towards sin. That's an example of not walking with God. You can have a flippid. Uh, they depended and they turned. They turned to. I'm hearing an echo, but they, they turned to depending upon Jesus speaking to the to the Pharisees and the scribes in Mark seven and six seven verse six and seven said, and he's quoting from Isaiah chapter. Uh, 29 verse 13 he says this people honors me with their lips but their heart is far from me they had no uh, so they turned and I look at, at verse 14 of chapter 7 therefore will I do unto this house which is called by my name wherein you trust do you see what they did they were trusting in the form in the house of the Lord. All through here, you, through Jeremiah, you'll find that they had they they were trusting in form without heart. See, to walk with to walk apart from the Lord leads to formalism. It leads to cold, dead religion. And you see, I believe today that that's what is killing our churches today in America is cold, dead. Religion, cold and dead religion. Now, uh, it's the children of Israel wandered around in the desert all of that time. They wandered and wandered. Now look. Now we now we go to chapter seventeen where we read there, and I want to use some things from that to 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 illustrate a point. Now. Notice what it says here. That cursed is the man that trusts in his flesh. For he, And the last part phrase of that says, whose heart has departed from the Lord. Do you realize that the longer and the longer that you walk in your own counsels, the further you get away from the Lord, and you can come and your heart becomes calloused, and you can sit, and when, some, when the Word is preached, or, or, or when the message is given, when the songs are sung, it has no effect anymore. It's just, a, it's just formalism. And the minute we leave and walk out the door, we are the same. Listen, I've said this over and over again. If I desire the things that I used to desire, and if I do the things I used to do, then I am what I was. Now, you cannot walk with the Lord because God is light. If you walk in the light, then His blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It is a sheer impossibility to walk with Him and to be morally and spiritually an infant. You cannot be. And I believe infancy is our problem in our churches today. You know why I say that? Because people who have been sitting on a church pew for 50 years, you ask them, if you died tonight, where would you spend your eternity? And they say, well, I hope I'll go to heaven. I, I, I'm a member of the church. I think I'm a good person. You hear all those things. Now tell me, that person has ever taken one step with the Lord. He's an infant. Now I'm not saying that person may not be saved. But certainly they have never walked with the Lord. They could not be in that state of doubt. They could not be. And let me tell you, we have people teaching Sunday school. I've talked to them. They tell me they teach Sunday school at a certain church. Could not give me the answer. Couldn't I give me the answer? That's sad, folks. That's sad. We should be growing. And look, we're talking about walk here today. We're talking about walking with the Lord and walking apart. Now, let me say this. And I still didn't get through this sermon. 
Okay. But anyway, Colossians 1.21 says, And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and unreprovable in his sight. Listen. He died and gave us death. You understand? He died and gave us death. He rose and gave us life. Okay? We can choose to walk in death. Or, do you understand? I'm, not, I'm talking about a, someone who has actually accepted Christ. They're born again. But we can choose to walk apart from fellowship with Him and it'll be a desert place. Here in chapter 17 when it talks about He shall be like a bush and there's no fruit. So how, what, what is the opposite side of the corn? I, his roots are in that living water. Uh, this uh, verse, uh, chapter 12 of that verse says, They have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living water. Now where am I anchored today? Where are your... Where are your roots? Are you putting your roots down deep today depending upon the Lord or depending upon your own self, your own ways, living the way you want to live? Or are you depending upon Him? Remember last week I talked about that little flower that was out here. I, I, I take it for granted most people didn't see it. There was a little flower in the cement and it, and it was blooming. Now, why could it bloom? Even though the pressures came in, just like here it talks about, he says when the heat comes and the, and, and the drought comes, it, will, it won't be anxious or afraid. Its root was in the Spirit, in the rivers, in the water. Its root was there. It was anchored. Where's your anchor today? Let me, let me say this. I'm going to close this. But I want us to understand something. What the Lord has done for us. You see, we died to the old man in Christ. And we are alive in Him. Now we're supposed to walk in Him. I have a cross here. This was a gift from Antoinette and, and Dennis to Darlene and I. Special. It means something. It's real special. But I want to say something. Do you remember what, it, what we talked about? That now we have the mind of Christ... There's five points on this cross. There's five points on that cross. Yeah, there's five. You see, there's a point right here where Jesus' head was. He crucified. The old one. And now, where His feet was, you see, my walk used to be according to the course of the world. But He's freed my feet. I can now walk apart from the world. I can walk with Him in fellowship. I don't walk in darkness anymore. I walk in light. I walk there. My hands... My left and my right hand. My hands are now, they're freed. They're freed from serving myself in the world. They're lifted to praise Him. They reach out. They reach out to others. They reach down to others. They serve Him and serve others. Well, where's the fifth part on here? It's right where the bars meet. The heart of God. There's three nails on this cross. But they did not hold Jesus. Hmm. 
love. Nailed him. Love nailed him. It held him there. If we're to walk with him, in fellowship with him, let me say this, try as you will, you will not walk, you will not love him until you fellowship with him. You cannot. You will not have the heart of God. Now, he so separated our old, he so separated our old human nature that we no longer have to serve it anymore. He separated us from that. Now we have a heart and a will. Had a heart and a will to serve Him. And let me, let me just say this. There's a whole lot of teaching today about reforming the heart, transforming the heart, improving the heart. No. No, it's the cross proves that the heart was deceitfully wicked. It still is. But there's a new nature in me. I don't have to serve the old nature anymore. My heart is still desperately wicked. He didn't eradicate that old nature. He didn't eradicate it. He's still there. But he's so constant. In 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 in. First Colossians, in Colossians rather, uh, uh, chapter 1 and verse 11, he says, he, the, His circumcision made without hands, the Spirit so separated, our old Adamic nature, and resurrected our spirit. Do you understand? It was dark, but now it's light. And He so separated us from that old nature that we no longer have to. We're not chained to that. But last week we talked about the chains are gone. We're not chained to that. And we don't have to, we don't have to, re, to, to uh, submit our bodies as instruments of evil, but as instruments of righteousness. The righteousness lived out. A life lived out through Him. And I'm going to, I'm going to close. The message is not over, but it's, I, I'm, 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 today, Today, do you have a desire to walk with Him and fellowship with Him? Do you have one? If you do not have one, all the trying in the world will not get you there. You must surrender your will. You must surrender. See, He has broken the chains and He's given us a heart and a desire and a will that we can serve Him and love Him. It depends on us. Will you walk forward in 2014 or will you choose to walk backwards? Who will you trust? Who will you trust? Before we close, let me say tonight, we will have services tonight. We're, we're at 6 o'clock, we'll be teaching on the Old, Old Testament symbols that portrayed the works and the ministry of the Lord. But today, I, <clears throat> I want you to meditate upon this message today. Not maybe the words I said, but what the, word, what the Lord spoke to you today. Where will you walk this next year? How was your walk in la last year? You can choose. You can choose yourself. Or you can choose the Lord. Now, today you may be in one of three places. You may be still in Egypt. Today the blood is available. You can apply it today by faith. You can apply it by faith today. You may be in the wilderness, but God does not want us to be in the wilderness. He wants us in that place of rest. Now that doesn't mean inactivity. That means resting in Him. <clears throat> or today, whatever your need is, as the instruments play softly, after a word of prayer, whatever decision you have to make, you make it. Let's pray. Gracious Father,
the best of my ability, I delivered your word. Father, would you talk to speak to each of us? Do we truly desire to walk in fellowship with you? To walk forward? To walk apart from sin? And walk in righteousness? Father, today help us. Give us the will to walk according to your will. In Jesus' name. Whatever your need is today, as we stand, as we stand, whatever your need is today, you come. Thank you, and uh, like I said tonight, please come back tonight. If you're visiting with us today, we, we're so grateful. Would you come back and be with us again? And uh, Brother Jack, would you come up and dismiss us, please, sir? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you now for your Holy Spirit that has been present this morning and so penetrating in my heart. And Lord, we just, just pray that each and every one take that message that Brother Bill has brought us this morning back and be back tonight, Lord, and always come in and, and on holy ground and allow the Holy Spirit open your heart to penetrate. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.